They said that and he came and was taking pictures of them, not in like I'm going to take a picture so I can report or, or do a seminar on how we need to manage fans. He was smiling, you know, and I went over to him and just said, you know, things like that are why I know that that your bias that you claim are some political behind the scenes thing from the owners is only half the story. There's a part of you that resents me. There's a part of you that's jealous of my success. There's a part of you that's jealous of my authenticity. There's a part of you that's jealous at my ability to, to, to transcend my, my circumstance. And you're a cornball. <laughs> and you're a cornball. And, 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 and you know, and, and looking back at it, it's funny how people, how people, well, how specifically Canadians were so, taken aback by that and it's and it's telling you know and i talk about it comically and we can because things should be talked talked about in a, in a comical fashion but it's telling that in a place where where being black is also very uh, minority that a country that loves the blood sport of hockey die hard loves the blood sport of hockey where fighting is the norm where fighting is legal that when the black guy called another black guy, a cornball that they, uh, you know, took that on and made it seem like it was a, a, a hate crime. It's like, well, how, how disassociated is that? This is why I think it's so important to get both sides to every story because mm-hmm. people from the outside are going to watch that video and they're going to make assumptions about you and they're not going to know the complete context. Yeah, for sure. Everything that you deal with makes so much sense now and that's what is mm-hmm. lost in the shuffle and that's the problem with the social media age mm-hmm. is it's always quick snippets and people are so quick to judge based on those quick snippets like mm-hmm. you said what i respect you for though is talking back to the fans and I, and I think it's so unfair that there's a precedence that fans can say whatever they want to a player but as soon as a player says something back to a fan they're in the wrong and, but in, in to, and to your point and i appreciate that yeah but to your point, that starts from the top down. It absolutely does. Uh, that starts from the NBA and the NBA, <clears throat> I think. And this is my this is my point about how they don't see the entire scope of the mental health conversation and its implications within their policies mm-hmm. is that you actually have an effect on the international basketball scene, whether you acknowledge it or not. True. Right. So Shape so it. so when they see that you find Joe Kim Noah for telling a fan to fuck off. Or, or whatever things have happened over the years mm-hmm. involving fans, mm-hmm. but you create an environment where you have a very, very lucrative, lucrative deal with Budweiser yeah. because you've created the space for fans to, to get come drunk at games and, and detach sit. themselves from their reality and say whatever they want because they're and, drunk and say it all of their pathological desires on yep. the players. Well, they don't they don't have an influence. They shape the entire basketball community Thank you. from the U.S to Europe, to Asia, mm-hmm. yep. to Africa, whatever, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's completely shaped by the NBA. I have to ask, do you, do you ever question your approach? Do you ever, you know, cause obviously you're somewhat a polarizing figure, you know, mm-hmm. um, do you ever question, do you ever have doubt in, in some of the things you're doing? Cause I also know you're extremely convicted, well read and passionate, but I yeah, mean, no, I definitely have doubts every day, yeah. all throughout the day, actually. And, you know, that is the that is the mechanism, I think, of staying true to oneself and, and while still progressing towards uh, an, an aspirational self, you know, because who you are in the moment is one thing, but who you aspire to be should always be out in front of you. Mm-hmm. And the only way to move towards that is to reevaluate who you are on a daily basis, which means that you have to be your own judge and you have to bring ev- put everything on trial or put as much on trial as you can bear. You know, because if you put too much on trial, you'll you'll run the risk of deconstructing your entire being in the moment and you won't be able to function. Yeah. And that's the that's the paradigm shift that you have to work off. of. What are, what are what are some of the doubts? And I guess, how do you push forward through those doubts? Yeah, well, I'm a brash mouth. I know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and yeah. you know, a part of me goes, you know, what is the appropriate amount of amount of brashness? And and, and I'm, I'm conflicted with that because. You know, I'm a firm believer of I'm a firm believer in acknowledging the temporal nature of being right. So in in, in doing so, we you could argue that that we have an infinite amount of time or that we have a finite amount of time And, and human beings will have a choice in whether their time in this realm of existence is infinite or finite. Will the species survive? But along that same vein, you have to also acknowledge that. Everything we do is is in respect to and in comparison to what we've done. 
So, so and what I mean by that is usually, and, and we are always in chaos, being is perpetual chaos. That's number one. But in the chaos, we have, we have articulated aspirations of what we want life to be, what we want our communities to be, what we want our families to be, what we want our individual value systems to be. And in order to get to those, we have to, we have to be able to adequately, uh, you know, reproach our, our past actions with our, our present actions and, and the prospects of our future actions. And in doing so, I just see things like, for example, when, in, when a league like the NBA does something so egregious as being made aware of the, the emerging science of mental health in the 70s or 80s, waiting until 2020 to make it policy as something that needs a bit of an extreme articulation to, to try and help shape how egregious that is. You know, it, it is kind of, it's kind of a, it's a scientific methodology where you say, you know, whatever the extremeness of the thing that you want to change, you have to meet with an equal force. And most people don't see the egregious, the, you know, the, the, the egregious occurrences within society in, in, in context to, where we should be or where we've been. You know, people don't pay that close attention and they're especially paying less attention now than they ever have. It's like, no, no, no. Don't think that a 12 year old black kid getting shot in front of his house with a toy gun shouldn't be met with a a ferociousness. There is a ferociousness that is appropriate there, you know, to to call into question the way that things are should be in respect to the result that we want to get. You know, and, and you have to meet extreme times with extreme measures. I agree with that. Let's take a quick break for our sponsor now, and we'll lighten it up a little bit with our <laughs> big butt segment when we come back. What's up, guys? Have you had a hard time finding a stylist who can cut your hair just right? Come see me, Heather Bates at Salon Concepts in St. Louis Park. Specializing in men's hair, I can guarantee you'll walk out with a great haircut you'll love, plus a free beer during your visit. It's easy to book online at salonconcepts.com. Mention the Shaver Suhan podcast, and I'll give you $5 off. All right, big butt segment. And as I've done many a time on this podcast, I admit when I'm wrong, and I've been wrong a lot. And I was wrong about Deadpool. So I'm going to just, you know, suck it up and and admit it. (laughs) Last week on this show, you told me, Jordan, you you were right. Deadpool number one was good, but Deadpool two was better. It was even better than the first one. It's a rare occurrence where a sequel is better than the first movie. I didn't think it was possible, but it was great. And I and I turned to the buddy I went and I saw it with. I turned because he listened to the podcast. Yeah. Ten minutes in, I could already tell I was completely off base. I turned to him like, "Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it! This Shit. is already can I, really, can I, really can good." I ask you why was it so good? Why'd you love it? I, I just thought it was deeper than the first one. You didn't need to set up his character as much. Yeah. You already knew who he was, yeah. and so it was all just unique. It was all just a story and i thought it was less gimmicky than the first one did, did i see that cables in it? Cable cables in it? it yeah that's badass it is you it's gotta great. be a real comic book fan to oh, know cable. <laughs> thank you absolutely um josh right. brolin did a great job it is weird that josh brolin is two people in the marvel universe though yeah, he shouldn't yeah. be cable and thanos that's a little bit that's weird, weird. Well, but he, he nailed it he kicked that role out of but the but deadpool's they're gonna keep the deadpool, deadpool series separate yeah, deadpool yeah. is never coming into the marvel absolutely. did ryan reynolds carry the movie absolutely so I, I'm an I told you so guy. Uh, and, Huge. I, I told but, you so. And, and, and I am a I admit when I'm wrong kind of guy. And I was wrong. It's it's totally worth go seeing. See it in theaters because that's the only way it should be seen. Absolutely. Jordan, what do you got for us? Kick it to Royce because I couldn't. You know, I'm still thinking. You're still thinking. Um, yeah, along the same Marvel vein, I'd say that you know my overall take on on the Marvel the the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what they're doing with it is is uh is great and as a comic fan as a childhood comic fan and a childhood marvel cartoon fan you can't love but see these characters come into fruition uh on the big screen with with the type of graphic control that they have now and 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 the type of you know footage that they're able to acquire now um but at the same time but yep there you go (laughs) (laughs) but extended version (laughs) but uh their diversion from the storylines really bothers me yeah. It really bothers me from the original storylines because usually I'm seeing the movies with people who don't necessarily not only know the characters that they're seeing now, but they don't know their context fully. Like, I think there's an assumption for Marvel that a lot of the people that are coming do understand somewhat about what 
you know, the characters that they're showing, yep. you know, especially when you get into the Avengers arc, they did their best to build them out. But yeah. even Iron Man initially is like, these are Marvel fans coming to see this, right, you know? Right. But usually I'm with people that don't know anything about Iron Man to begin with. So I'm trying to tell, like, they're asking me questions because I'm usually going with people that know I'm a comic fan. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, you know, well, who's this person? Who's this person? And I usually have to go in and, and try and afterward, uh, you know, where, when it usually happens and go like, well, they broke from the storyline here, but, but, you know, this is, this is kind <laughs> <laughs> of what they were saying you know and you see that the most with the first avengers in the entire mm-hmm. roster is like you can't not have ant-man and wasp in the first avengers iteration yep they were founding members of the of the avengers yep you know so to bring scott lang in <laughs> you see how critical i am of everybody <laughs> i was going to say that is the most deep and enlightened marvel take that i've heard i, love it, <laughs> I, love I like it too i like it too we can all agree though that e- though there are Plenty of flaws in the Marvel series overall. It's yeah. so yeah. much better than DC. Yeah. Oh yeah, the for way sure. they just threw Justice League on us. Yeah, it was never. Well, it was never any comparable. Backstory. Well, and, it was crazy. And to the yeah. same effect with Justice League, you can't have a Justice League and not have the Green Lantern. I don't care if you had a Ryan Reynolds mix up with the first movie. Yeah. There's a <laughs> and, and fiduciary responsibility yeah. <laughs> to bring that story arc into existence <laughs> in its accurate historical fashion, or else you're doing all the comic. You're basically slapping the comic fans, and all the time they spend reading it. Yeah, you know, and yeah, I think people true. feel like that, but. But us comic fans, we're so. Uh, Do you have physical comics? Do you own? Yeah, them? yeah, yeah. Awesome. We're so we're so habitual as comic fans. I think just by nature, our personality that we'll take it anyway. We're like, ah, shit. We just want to see some cool <laughs> shit. Yeah, you know. But but down low, yeah. we're like, oh, fuck you guys for changing that storyline. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's politics and money. You know, well, it's it's, it's the movies, man. Yeah, it's, it's all the movie about, business. It's all about I, yeah. I thought I was a comic guy until I just heard that though. Now I gotta re- I gotta go do some research. I thought I was that. a comic guy, but yeah. I talked to Royce White. And I realized <laughs> yeah, I really. <laughs> that's the that's the quote of the day. <laughs> Ant Man and Wasp, first Avengers. You know what I mean? Hashtag that. <laughs> what well, do you got, Jordan? God, I shouldn't have kicked it to him first. But uh <laughs> you know what? I'ma stick with I liked Avengers, the first one, every bit of it. Except they killed my man, the Black Panther. But they killed my man, the Black They're Panther. They're not dead. I wasn't though. but I don't I don't even like to see him. I was I was still hype off the off the uh off his movie. And then just to see him go, I was just like, See, but I, I thought, okay, now, my so sorry, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't, I gotta be honest now. You haven't seen oh, it yet? Did I just ruined it? I haven't seen the second Avengers Oh, no, yet. spoilers. Oh, they killed T'Challa? But, <laughs> oh, man. So they killed, oh, no, yeah, they, they, seen killed the last a lot of, they killed a lot of people. Yeah. But I, but I think it was but obvious you know. that they're just setting up. They're gonna bring those guys back in this other one, well, yeah. and they're gonna kill off the the OGs. And I don't, like I don't, Iron Man and Thor and those guys. I feel like they're the ones that are I, end up permanently dying. I don't think Black Panther is dead. They have another one coming out. Think, they have another Black Panther well, coming out on Black the horizon. Panther's coming he back. can't be dead. I don't, I don't feel bad because you probably know the Infinity War storyline and Thanos. You probably read yeah, the comic. I'm, and I'm, I'm pissed because yeah. that's just not how the story goes. I, I was yeah. pissed that that they took Thor's eye in, in Ragnarok. Yeah. It's just like where are they where are they going with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know how how unnecessary. Yeah. It's like, why did, you know, who, who's writing this thing that just feels the, yeah. the need to unnecessarily take the, the God of Thunder's eye? Hollywood. Like, I, super yeah, weird Hollywood. and arrogant. I will know. tell you, he gets an eye back. But that's why I don't, yeah, he does get his he eye back. He gets his eye back. That's why okay, I don't good. think, that's why so, I don't think Thor they is right dying. They write the wrong. I don't yeah, think yeah. Thor is dying because he is, is he yeah, the most well, powerful well, Avenger that we've seen I, I to date on screen? Yeah, for sure. He's a God. Right. Only, only person that I think in. Even in the in the comic books, that really well, there's some there's some fringe guys in there that rival Thor's power, like uh, like uh, Franklin Richards, like people most people don't know is is uh, Mister Fantastic oh, yeah. and yeah. and uh, and, uh, and the Captain, Invisible Woman, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. She's on her way on the next one. Yeah, she probably not as strong as Thor either, but she's up there. You know, well, that, people think, like people think, like that. There's some scattered in there. Yeah, but Thor's Thor's up there. Yeah, and know? I think that the way they're setting it up, I think that would be up for debate. They're kind of setting yeah. it up. For, I think this conversation right now is is awesome. Because it shows the range people that like you guys aren't just basketball players, and <laughs> right. that's the such a misconception sometimes with athletes is that everything is about the sport. Like, hey, look at we're talking about what some people would think is really nerdy. This is a, yeah. kind of a nerdy conversation. Oh, it is nerdy, but it's a beautiful conversation. <laughs> right. all the same. I, would, I would say, yeah, and I would say that that might be the biggest misconception about basketball players. I think more of us are probably a little nerdy than people would expect. Well, yeah, that's but, great. You know, and and it's, it just shows that you know some stereotypes are are accurate and necessary like 
one that I always love is a, is a cliche one of black people love chicken. It's like, of course, but, <laughs> right. but everybody loves I chicken. Love, right? I love chicken. Everybody loves chicken. <laughs> I you know, love chicken. Now, how black people prepare the chicken <laughs> might be might be specific, but you know, <laughs> stereotypes don't have to be taken so seriously no, either. Really you know, uh, and and they're often wrong in the details. Yeah, like like right. we said about all these conversations, and you know, for for example, like I'm a kid that grew up playing basketball on. A- 